Back in the 80s and 90s, just about every rapper was in a group compared to being a solo artist. However, here in 2024, it's the complete opposite. When you think of a rap group, iconic names may come to mind, such as Wu-Tang Clan, A Tribe Called Quest, or NWA. Or perhaps you're thinking of more recent groups like Ray Schremer, YBN, Brock Hampton, or The Migos. But despite their commercial success, why did every single one of these rap groups eventually break apart? You know what I mean? We stand on real deal, real deal loyalty. And, you know, sometimes that shit ain't displayed. That is what it is. Right now, we're going to be the duo till time tell. While groups have been a pillar of hip-hop's foundation, it's no secret that we are currently witnessing the end of an era. From nasty feuds fueled by jealousy between members, lawsuits attacking each other over millions of dollars, and much more crazy drama that we're about to see, today, every rap group seems to be doomed from the start. The first proper rap song ever recorded was actually by a group of three dudes called the Sugar Hill Gang, with their 1979 classic hit, Rapper's Delight. However, over the past 50 years, we've seen countless hip-hop groups fall apart while in the spotlight. For the sake of this video, a rap group will be referring to any non-solo artist who does not primarily release music as an individual. This is different from a collective such as ASAP Mob or Beast Coast, for example, where artists drop music together every few years. And a group is also different from a rapper-owned record label such as J. Cole's Dreamville or Playboy Cardi's Opium. From some of the earliest groups such as Run DMC in 1983, paving the way as the first hip-hop group to be nominated for a Grammy, the Beastie Boys and A Tribe Called Quest, Wu-Tang Clan, salt and Peppa, Lil Wayne's Hot Boys, Outkast and 3-6 Mafia, and the legendary NWA in 1987, just to name a few. So you're doing it for the money? Yeah! I mean, all this is for the money! Yeah. We, are, we ain't gonna do no records, you know that, that's all off and we think nobody's gonna buy. One of the most significant transitions in hip-hop, though, has been the move from artists operating in groups versus now solo acts. And while it definitely makes sense due to the reasons we'll see in a second, that isn't to say there haven't still been successful groups this past decade. From mainstream names such as Sway Lee and his brother's duo Ray Schremer, Rockhampton and YBN, Suicide Boys and Shoreline Mafia, Flatbush Zombies, 50 Cent's G-Unit, the wasted potential of 88 Glam, and of course we can't forget the Atlanta trio known as the Migos. Do y'all feel like, man, that Migos are the like the biggest group in hip hop right now? We the biggest group ever. That way. Go ahead now. Got to be. However, despite the Migos claiming themselves as the biggest group ever, even they would eventually cut ties, joining almost every other rap group in history as very few are still together today. But before we see exactly what brought the Migos to a close, first I gotta tell you about this fun game I've been playing. Now to be honest, you've probably seen this game advertised everywhere, and like I used to, just assume that it was trash. Which it turns out is very far from the truth. Raid Shadow Legends is a completely free mobile hero collection RPG played by over 5 million monthly active users around the world. The biggest misconception about Raid is that it has no depth and requires no strategy. But with over 800 heroes to collect along with the addition of the Cursed City and over 100 new stages to complete, there is always something to keep you immersed. The second misconception is that it takes too long to play and get good. Well, not only does every good thing require time, but Raid also has an auto battle mode if you prefer, and it's cross-platform so you can basically play anywhere. Like any game, paying money does help you progress faster, but again Raid has a ton of completely free-to-play content for all users. As Raid celebrates its 5-year anniversary, there has never been a better time to start playing. By clicking the link in the description or scanning my QR code on screen, you can receive bonuses worth up to $100, including Epic Champion Lady E. Tessa, 500k silver, and much more. Plus, when you reach level 25, you'll get an additional 500k silver in bonuses. But that's not all, because if you use my link and enter the promo code FESTIVAL5, you will also receive another Epic Champion Tayrell along with 500k more silver. You don't want to miss out on these insane bonuses. Once you're in and crushing enemies, come find me under the username 1111 with 3 ends. You can then join my clan and I'll catch you guys on the battlefield. As the number one most certified rap group of all time, the Migos split back in 2022 was not only unexpected, but also showed us all of the exact reasons these groups never last. How do y'all make sure y'all stay together as a team? Because usually this is around the time when we start seeing teams start dispersing a little bit, breaking up and beefing and bickering. It's real family right here. Blood. I mean, we've been through everything. The Migos credited family as what held them together, but just three years after this interview came their final project ever. As one of the last powerhouse rap groups remaining, although the three have never said what exactly led to their split prior to Takeoff's unfortunate passing, two major instances in 2017 were a huge factor. The biggest reason we see rap groups break up simply stems back to jealousy. What happens is, in the beginning stages and formation of a group, everybody is humble and just excited to be there for the journey. However, as they start to find success, egos quickly develop. And in addition to egos, typically one artist will begin to outshine the others and become who fans recognize as the face of a group. Thus, this often results in resentment, leaving the other members bitter. 
to me, is selfishness mm-hmm. yeah. <laughs> because you can't have a group like you had back in there because yeah. nobody wants to be that dude in the group. Everybody wants to be that dude in the group. In the group. Mm-hmm. And if you do get a group, they're only going to last for the first project. And, and don't let it be successful because the ego's going to kick in. Yeah. The they're going to split. Take the former rap group YBN. After meeting each other playing GTA Online, the trio of YBN Namir, YBN Corday, and YBN Almighty J are another perfect example of why rap groups collapse. Your quote was, they left this YBN shit in the dirt. Yeah. It be hella shit in the background. We all gonna fuck around and slip up, do something that's gonna fuck up the image of this shit. It's always gonna be something with a group. Hmm. Yeah, it's only me, kid. Namir tweeted in 2020 confirming that YBN had disbanded. Through the three years YBN was together, it became clear that Corday was the most talented artist of the group and by far the most praised by fans, especially following his two Grammy nominations for his debut solo album, The Lost Boy, in 2019. As we see it go almost every single time, as one member becomes the star of a group, they then realize they can make way more money and likely be more famous as a solo act. And since rappers honestly have the biggest egos, not only do they all want the spotlight to themselves, but they also want the bag to themselves. And of course, the money is split up when you're in a group. However, along with egos growing with clout, also grows an artist's feeling of independence, leading to then, when problems arise in the group, the ability for them to just leave and do their own thing. <laughs> it wasn't a popular thing at the time, you know, I was getting killed online, and I got tough skin, like, this is just what come with the game, you know, I don't be tripping off anything. I can't be talking to kids about ownership and all of this, you know, when we pushing this brand that won't even own it. Corday officially dropped the YBN acronym from his name in 2020, and despite claiming there was no bad blood, it didn't seem like Namir felt the same way. But it was definitely a smart move for his career, going on to work with legends like Lil Wayne while Namir dropped Soul Train, quite possibly the worst song ever made. 50 Cent and the smash success of his first solo album, Get Rich or Die Trying in 2003, was the main reason for G-Unit's demise. Debuting at number one and selling almost 900,000 copies in its first four days, 50 Cent was no doubt destined to be a star. But that also meant leaving his group, G-Unit, behind G unit the first record came out boom I forced the G unit album to come out True. and this scope didn't want the G unit album it want the next 50 cent record he just sold 13 million records right mm-hmm. I am not Ray Schremer I'm Slim Jimmy and I'm gonna sink or swim by myself Slim Jimmy tweeted back in 2019 not Ray Schremer Again, it was clear that one member, in this case Sway Lee, was the star and fan favorite of the group Ray Schremmer. Pairing a little jealousy, allegations, and likely more that went down behind the scenes, the brothers would split for a four-year hiatus following Shrem Life 3, which is important to note that Shrem 3 was a triple album with solo projects included from both rappers. Experimenting with solo albums while in a group is a risky move that really never seems to end well, which is why many fans point to what Offset did back in 2017 as the start of the Migos split. Oftentimes you don't have strong artists and it's hard for all three members to be superstars in a group, said Quavo eerily foreshadowing the Migos' future. Then with time, some of that shit falls off, and then soon, they're gone. With their signature triplet flow, what made the Migos so great was that they all complemented each other perfectly, and there was no clear star between the three. You could argue Quavo was the face of the group simply because he was often on the choruses of their early hits and the most vocal in the media. However, many fans feel that the Migos dropping solo albums was what initially sparked this tension between them. As the first member of the group to release a project not under the Migos' name, Offset linked up with 21 Savage and Metro Boomin for a collab album titled Without Warning in 2017, then followed by Quavo's first album a year later featuring this terrible artwork, and then Offset's debut, Father of Four, and Takeoff's The Last Rocket. Your solo album, you know, why was it time to kind of branch off from Migos? Uh, it's not even a branch off, it was just, we all just want to express ourselves on a full project. Dropping solo albums like this gives artists the chance to really showcase their talent and assures them they can succeed on their own if necessary. Not to mention artists get to see how much money they can make by themselves when their check isn't split three ways. Once members of a group become more popular in their own rights though, it also becomes significantly more difficult to not only tour as a group, but also work on music together and be as present as they once were. For this reason, we've seen multiple rappers break off from their group and have massive solo careers, such as Lil Wayne whose Hot Boys squad broke up in 2001, Jadakiss from The Locks, as well as Ice Cube and Dr. Dre from NWA. But as for the Migos, Offset's 2017 album with 21 Savage opened the door for his solo career, dropping just three days after he proposed to superstar Cardi B. The second move that fans speculate played a big part in the Migos collapse. (laughs) 
The moment you attach yourself to a group, you are now affected by what happens to every single other member as well, whether positive or negative. Amir is no longer in Brockhampton. We want to sincerely apologize to the victims affected by Amir's actions. Following multiple women bringing SA allegations to light on Twitter against member Amir Van, Brockhampton was forced to remove him, canceling their tour and scrapping their fourth album in the process. This is really, it's really hard. I don't agree with anything Amir has admitted to. As one of the group's founders in the face of their hit 2017 saturation trilogy, Amir's departure left a huge hole in the group, soon leading to their indefinite hiatus. Internal conflicts have been the reason for countless breakups these past 50 years. Despite claiming it a, quote, business decision and personal choice to leave the weekend's XO record label, the truth is Toronto duo 88 Glam was dropped after their messy split went public, to the point where they were saying things like this to each other on social media. First of all, Derek Wise, he threatened to kill me off of music. All right, you want to threaten my life, right? When I when I make all your hooks, I'll never rock with that again. Like, for real. Like, I wish that nigga the worst. Beginning to crack into the mainstream with hits like Lil Boat and It's a Flex and destined to blow up even more as opening acts on the weekend's After Hours tour, along with the announcement of their highly anticipated 2020 album including mainstream features like DaBaby, Lil Durk, Nev, and Rich the Kid, none of this would ever happen though, as allegations between members Derek Wise and 88 Camino began to come out. Paired with personal disputes over their association with EXO in the weekend, 88 Glam would split on nasty terms never to speak again. Derek's the fakest in the game. He never cared about me. All he cared about was being on EXO's dick. I'm like, Abel signed me, he didn't even give me a feature. This dick makes, ma makes 500 M's a year, and he can't give his one song. Today, labels simply prefer solo acts as they are easier to both negotiate contracts with as well as manage one artist compared to multiple. Rappers again have the biggest egos, and it's hard for them to stay on the same page with other rappers for a long period of time. However, while no bad allegations arose within the Migos, similar to 88 Glam, internal conflicts seem to tear them apart. To confirm the beef that fans were speculating, in May of 2022, Offset and Cardi B unfollowed both Quavo and Takeoff on social media. And this came just one day after Quavo and Takeoff announced that not only were they dropping an entire collab album together, but also that they were forming a new duo called Unk and Few, obviously leaving Offset the odd one out. We want to see our career as a duo. You know, we just came from a loyal family, you know what I'm saying, that's supposed to stick together. And, you know, sometimes when it don't work out, it ain't. It ain't meant to be. Egos and clout appear to have yet again split the once unbreakable trio apart. Combined with cheating rumors and probably more behind the scenes we don't know about, things would only get worse as just two months later, Offset filed a lawsuit against the Migos label quality control over ownership of his solo music. This issue of money and ownership is arguably just as big of a reason why these groups always end. There's more money in the solo play, former NWA member Ice Cube said, the royalties don't go up for how many members you have in the group. Only one year after the release of their legendary breakout album Straight Outta Compton in 1988, Ice Cube quit the group claiming that their manager, Jerry Heller, and other members were denying him money. Having written almost half the lyrics on the album, Cube felt he wasn't seeing his fair share of royalties, and also felt that Eazy-E was getting more attention from their label, Interscope. So he left. It's time for us to, to put their head on the, on the chopping blocks, take a swing with the axe. Financial disagreements were also the main factor for the split of another legendary group, A Tribe Called Quest, in 1998. While signed under Jive Records, not only did they face issues with their label about royalties owed, but concern over the group's direction led to tension between both parties. Due to these creative differences and the fact that artists evolve and eventually get tired of working with the same people, combined with the always complex struggle to be both friends and business partners, today it's no secret that the era of groups dominating hip-hop is over. The truth is though, nothing is meant to last forever, and rap groups are no exception. As time goes on, people and personalities change, and there's nothing wrong with wanting to switch things up. So while it is easy to say these groups fail simply because they never last and very few are still together, groups tend to represent a moment in time instead of a long-term career path. Plus, many of them have sprouted stars and racked up millions of streams despite only being together a few years. We just creatives, you feel me? And we have creative differences. Right. Like, I feel like all creatives want some their own way, you feel me? Mm. So, four different people, that's four different visions. We see these same exact issues with groups in every other genre too, such as Fifth Harmony, Destiny's Child, Blink-182, The Beatles, and One Direction to name a few. Not to mention groups break up all the time in TV shows, businesses, friendships, marriages, etc. And while like we just saw, a lot of splits can be intense, not every rap group's breakup is ugly.
As one of the most beloved groups in hip-hop history, back in 2007, the duo of Big Boy and Andre 3000, known as OutKast, announced that they would be taking a break to pursue their own solo careers, splitting on a peaceful note after almost two decades of making music together. I think uh, just in general, when it came to where my creative juice is coming from within OutKast, like, there, there was a certain point where I just didn't know where else to go. There was no such thing as singular success. Recalls Quest love of when the roots began in 1987. Everything had to happen in a movement. Back when hip hop first started, a group effort was basically needed, with the idea being the more members in a group, the easier to spread your music via word of mouth. However, with the internet now and social media, not only can you market and build a fan base entirely by yourself right on your cell phone, but now you can also record and produce music alone, eliminating the need to work in the studio with other people. These past few years, the trend has now shifted to instead of groups, actual record labels owned by rappers like Travis. Travis Scott's Cactus Jack, which I've already made a video about why those are a trap too. In my opinion, the best way to go about forming groups is like Run the Jewels or Silk Sonic for example, where artists come together and drop music once they are already established and under no contract obligation. But still, it's a very thin line to walk. The key to avoiding failure as a rap group comes down to communication, trust, resilience, and above all else, staying true to the music. Although it honestly feels like every single one eventually crumbles under the same issues, there's no doubt that hip-hop would not be where it is today without the impact of groups. And again, don't forget to check out my Raid Shadow Legends link in the description or scan my QR code to get insane free bonuses and epic champions.